Welcome back. You're watching Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. And back home on the Lodge Street, the Nifty gain closed around a percent to end the day above the 10,600 mark. The Sensex added nearly around 350 points. And the Nifty Bank, that was a big outperformer. Though the mid caps, they ended with just minor gains, relative underperformer in yesterday's trading session. For the time being, the SGX Nifty is indicating a bit of a cut. But Anisha is with us. Anisha, tell us what are the cues you're looking at? Oh, well, yes, Nigel, as you mentioned, yesterday all the major indices ended at the high point of the day, especially the Nifty and the Sensex and the Bank Nifty. Mid-cap index, yes, was a tad bit of underperformer, but that too recovered around 150 points from the day's low. We got uh, buy figures from both the FIIs and DIIs as far as the cash equity markets go. So FIIs bought around 62 crores, while the DIIs, they bought around 350 crores. As far as the cues for today is concerned, if you look at the global markets, the cues are a bit mixed. Yes, the U.S. markets ended well in the green. The Dow is up around 350 points. S&P gained 1.5%. And uh, the FANG stocks, they all rebounded. And that's the reason Nasdaq outperformed and was up around 2%. So all these beaten down names, whether Amazon, Google, all these stocks rallied and were close to over 1%. Uh, what the street is watching out for is the speech coming in from the Fed Reserve Chair Jerome Powell later in the week. And of course, all eyes are on the G20 summit. Now, after the market closed, there are some interesting comments that came in from President Donald Trump. He said that it is highly unlikely that he will not go ahead with putting that 25% tariff on 200 billion worth of goods, which is expected to uh, happen in coming January. He said that they might impose a 10% tariff when it comes to the Apple products being imported from China. Remember, as of now, Apple products are exempt. And that's the reason perhaps the Apple stock tumbled around 2-3% in the aftermarket after trading session. So that is something perhaps which is... Um, you know, worrying Asia as well, because if you look at the Asian screens, well, we had opened well in the green. We're still trading in the green. But if you look at Nikkei, we are trading at the low point of the day, pretty much around the flat line now. So giving up all the gains and similar is the case with Cospi as well. We started off well in the green, but that too is trading near the day's low. In fact, it has moved into the red down about, uh, you know, one tenth of a percent. Hang Seng and Shanghai, the early rates were also suggesting a bit of red cup. And as a result, SGX Nifty, that one is telling you that we might see a cut of around 60 points. As far as the other cues are, are concerned, crude of course has rebounded but it continues to hover in that 60 to 61 dollar per barrel mark range. Uh, as far as rupees concerned, the dollar index is over the 97 level now and that's why perhaps despite of having positive cues, the rupee weakened yesterday, it ended at the levels of around 70.9. We have a lot of important cues lined up for the week. Uh, the state of Madhya Pradesh and Mizoram go to poll tomorrow. We have you know, expiry coming up this uh, Thursday. India Q2 GDP data and G2 20 summit we have been talking about. So those are the cues to watch out for the week. Uh, but Nigel for Nifty, uh, the important levels to watch out for on the downside is a 20-day moving average of 10,489, uh, 50-day moving average on the upside at 10,679, and 200-day moving average at around 10,750. So we'll watch out for all these levels as well. Absolutely, Anisha. And yes, this trading session, we bounced off the 20 DMA. That's what gave the bulls, you know, some heart. And ahead of uh, FNO expiry, the bounce like that is uh, what you see. Then, in fact, in the short positions, they'll get nervous and they may shut down as well. And that's what could give the market some legs as well. But we'll wait by for the opening today. Uh, meanwhile, tell us what kind of, you know, what are the stocks you're looking at uh, for today's trading session? Well, Nigel, yes, bang in the last, uh, you know, half an hour dying minutes of trade actually rebounded. And that was because we picked up a source-based story saying that, yes, bank promoter companies have prepaid around 400 crore loans to mutual fund companies. So I'll continue watching out for that. And especially because there has been another news report that RBI is actually studying, yes, bank's exposure to NBFCs. So all these companies like India Bulls as well as DHFL will be in focus on account of that. Sun Pharma, there is a news that the company has made an acquisition in Japan and the acquisition price is close to 1 million US dollars, around 700 odd crores. And separately, they have settled up some, uh, some stakes in the US as well. So that is something to watch out for. Separately, uh, on Jet Airways, we are picking up a story that the company is looking to cut workforce and they have cut some workforce in Koshi and Hyderabad as well. So there might be some positive cues that the street can take from it that the company is really taking effort on the ground to cut down their costs. 
Moving on, there is a report for future retail and future group of companies that uh, Mr. Biani may give buyout right to Amazon. The story has been developing for a while. Let's see if we react to this or not. Unicam, uh, a news coming in that the Mumbai's office has received an establishment inspection report. So that's a positive. IFCI has recovered 490 crores on account of Banani Cement. So that's a positive as well. Just quickly mentioning now Bharat Ventures because they have got, uh, they have signed contracts with Tata Power and that's at a good rate of around 5.75 uh, per unit so that will be in focus as well okay thanks so much anisha for running us through uh, all the market cues as well as stocks that we'll be looking out for let's slip into a short break on that note but, uh, but as we do that let's hear out some opinion coming in from vikas kimani of uh, carnelian capital advisors on the sectors he likes as well as where he sees opportunities as far as the IT is concerned, we are in a reasonably good phase where we have started to see a demand pickup, volume pickup across the board, and especially for the you know mid -pa mid cap IT companies, smaller uh, you know 500 million to a billion dollar kind of size companies, and I think they have a good chance of growing. But overall, pack is growing. If you see the kind of uh, inquiries order book is getting built very very well the structurally India will depreciate five to six percent and that helps IT company in general so I would like to you know remain positive or I remain positive on the sector given the fact that there's a strong demand uh, you know environment in the developed markets structurally consumption you can't go wrong as long as you have taken you know good quality companies and uh, of course they are expensive but uh, you know as long as the demand environment which I think is likely to remain strong over the next five seven years uh, you would uh, do well uh, in QSR space you got to have the you know right business model and I think something like Jubilant has done reasonably well in getting you know right scale right uh, uh, business model right growth I think they would do well uh, I don't have a significant view on a lot of other players but I think QSR in general uh, is a very good space and I think uh, will do well uh, uh, over, over, over a long period of time Indian markets were in a, in a you know, trouble uh, situation, hence you saw significant correction and whenever you know this kind of correction happened in a very high quality stock, you, you tend to kind of look at it as an opportunity. So I think Maruti will continue to do well uh, and again you know you can look at different players like you know Hero Motor I think would do well, Ashok Leland I think is very well placed if you ask me in my opinion. So I think automobile as a, in general space uh, looks reasonably well and uh, most of the stocks have corrected significantly in the you know in the, in the recent past and I do believe they are a good franchise offering good returns on capital and uh, good growth